Hi, everybody. Third attempt. Um, this is the 10th episode of Duke's Download with my guest, a uh, four-time Olympic gold medalist and uh, the greatest diver of all time, an LGBTQ icon, Greg Luganis, is our guest today. I just talked to him over Facebook, so I believe he will be on any second. He said he was on Instagram, so let me see here. Um, he said he would be on, so... He said I'm on, he said I'm on Instagram, so. Let's see, I'm gonna mess. Guys, my apologies for the uh, delays. Oh, he says, um, yeah, I think the issue is that Greg, he said it doesn't show up, I will try again. So the problem is that apparently for some reason, He's not able to see that I'm live in the, in the upper left-hand corner of his screen. That's the issue. So hopefully he will see it now. And then I guess because somebody has to be on already in order, for, in, or, in order for you to request for them to join the conversation. That's what makes it difficult. Um, oh, so annoying. Yeah, he may have a bad Wi-Fi connection. I don't know what's what's going on, but hold on, we're gonna we're gonna figure this. So, uh, this is annoying, but yeah, for some reason he's not he's not seeing it for some reason. Oh God, sorry about this, guys. And oh, here he is. Okay, I think I have him on right now. Hold on. I'm going to send him a request. <laughs> I'm requesting him at this moment. Connecting. Hi, Greg. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. I had, I couldn't find you. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I'm here. Yeah, sorry, I, sorry about that. Sorry, I, I know that was annoying. That was, um, you know, te technical issues, but we're here. Okay. So good to see you. Good to see you. How are you doing? I'm good. I was thinking, um, I guess the last time we saw each other in person was at the Go-Go show backstage at the Great yeah. a couple yeah. of years ago, which was such a great night. Yeah, and, mom, um, that was so cool. And it meant so much to me that you were there. And, uh, you know, that was, that was a pretty cool experience. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking, like, I guess the first time I met you would have been um, at Howard Bragman's house, probably seven or eight oh, years wow. ago. Yeah. So that was like, I think at a barbecue, maybe um, summer barbecue, but I've always been so funny. I've always been such wait, a huge wait, admirer was, of yours. Wait, was his dog uh, retrieving um, toys from in the pool? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Those are Howard's kind of uh, parties. Howard Bragman. Yeah, he's a, he's a character. He's great. I love, I love Howard, but yeah. Uh, but no, you know, I've always been such an admirer of yours. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, given that it's Pride Month, I thought that you would be a perfect person to talk to. And, uh, you know, you're such a role model and a hero to me and, and so many other people. Well, thank um, you. I mean, happy Pride. Happy Pride. I know it's, you know, it's so weird because obviously under normal circumstances, this would be, a, you know, celebratory um, you know, uh, happy moment, you know, in our, in our lives and in the country, right. but it's just been such a, um, oh. insane period. Crazy, crazy, it's, insane. And I know that I've, you know, I've obviously I follow you on Twitter and I see that you've been pretty vocal about, um, you know, retweeting and posting about <laughs> stuff that's been going on. Um, yeah. but Get I don't vote. Yeah, I know. You I mean, know, that's, that's the most important vote, thing. Vote, vote, vote. Yeah. I mean, I, I was curious because I know you're someone that's very like, um, not just politically, but just, you know, you're very concerned about, you know, uh, you know, you're a, you're a philanthropist and a hum humanitarian. And I was actually curious to sort of get your perspective on not just what's going on with the protests, but also with what we've been going through with COVID. Like how, what is the way that you've sort of been um, interpreting and sort of taking in everything that's been going on? 
Well, you know, with the athletes that I've been working with, it's, you know, it, it's relatively easy. It was funny. I was on a, a, a Zoom meeting with um, Edwin Moses and, mm -hmm. I mean, some really, like, big names. And, you know, and we were part of the 1980 Olympic team. Uh, and I was a part of that team. And so, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the media were trying to make uh, correlations between the boycott of 1980 and uh, a postponement uh, for the Olympic Games for next year. And it's just like, well, 1980, the boycott didn't save lives, mm -hmm. you know, but the, bo the postponement of the Olympics will save lives. Mm -hmm. And also, it's just one one year, and right. any of the athletes that I've worked with, uh, that I've been working with, it's just like, okay, figure out where where are you at, assess where you were at. Is that where you want to be? You know, if the Olympics were just a few months away, mm -hmm. you know, so they can assess, you know, what they need to be, you know, what, where they were, what they want to improve, all of those things so that uh, they can be even better prepared for next year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's, it's just a recalibration, you know, and a one-year calibration is, uh, you know, is quite different from a four-year right. uh, hiatus from, uh, from your sport. Totally. No, it's at least the, the event's actually going to take place. You know, yeah, we yeah. assume or we hope, yeah. you know, unless God, God willing, no, no other, you know, things thrown at us, you know, unforeseen disaster. Oh, yeah. Right. But so yeah. I assume you, you were planning to go or you were you were you had a role uh, being, uh, you know, uh, uh, on the Olympic Committee and you were you were going to you well, were going to go next year. I, I, I'm not on the Olympic Committee, but uh, I, you know, I, I, I was, well, was going to find a way to a, get there. I know you had a role. I know you had a role. I know at the last Olympics as well, but um, in in uh, um, in Rio. 2012, L London. I was the um, athlete mentor for right. that Olympic team, and I was also prepping them for the Rio Olympics as well. So a lot of the athletes I've worked with. Uh, so that that was that was great. It was. Uh, <laughs> It, it, it was a lot of fun. It, it, it was great to see them, um, you know, because we hadn't been successful in the Olympics previous to that. We, we got one medal in 2000, and we got zero medals in 04, zero medals in 08, and they added four more events. So they had four more opportunities for medals, and we got zero medals. So um, it was it was great to work with the kids and yeah. London we got four medals uh, Rio we got three so that was uh, that was a success. No, that's fantastic. And so, do you do you think you may go next year, or do you have plans to? Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, that's you know, that's the key is get getting yourself there. Uh, you know, once you're there, it's like they put you to work. So right. uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's plans exciting to be there. But, no, that's, um, that's super exciting. Um, but so, like in the meantime, I mean, how, what what has your life been like during this whole like last few months? Like, how have you been staying uh, busy during this period? Well, my husband and I have been playing ping pong. We're getting pretty good. <laughs> that's <laughs> you know, awesome. Social distancing and all that stuff. But I mean, that's one thing uh, you know that we we have been pretty consistent on and uh, working with the dogs and and right. all that. Of course. Kind of slowing down. Um, We've also been working on uh, my biopic based on the right. autobiography, Breaking the Surface. So really excited about that. That's incredible. And now, I, I remember, um, was it like during or right after Sundance, you guys announced it was like a big, it was a big deal. And it's, it's yeah. uh, I mean, so the, it's a, the script is currently in development. Is that right? Yeah, the script is currently in development. Uh, I, I told my manager, I'll be looking for the script on Monday because I've been hearing this, oh, he, you know, they're being very meticulous and say, okay, I want to see script, you know, come on. No, I mean, it's, it must be like, I mean, obviously it's lots of anticipation, you know? Right. Um, yeah. But it's incredible because I mean, not only was the book incredible and, um, you know, and obviously you did an amazing job writing it, but you had the documentary four or five Eric, years ago. Eric Marcus did a wonderful job. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I love Eric Marcus, and I didn't want any pretense that I was a writer, and that um, you know that, and I worked so closely with Eric. I mean, he 
you know, basically moved in with me. I didn't know that they made him sign a writer. Random House made him sign a writer to make sure that he would have it finished within one year. Wow. Yeah, which is, I mean, most of those kinds of books take, you know, four to five years. And they were afraid that I was going to die. <laughs> so they made him sign off on that. And so um, he didn't share that with me until after we were on book tour. <laughs> I mean, no, I know. I know that, you know, you, you've been, and that's also honestly another reason I wanted to talk to you is because you've been someone that, you know, obviously in your own unique way, but you've been through a lot of adversity and you've been through a lot of sort of, you know, um, difficult times in your life where you weren't necessarily sure you know, not only what your future would look like, but if you would even have a future. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and you've been sort of there and, and present and a witness to a lot of the changes that have been happening in our society right. on, you know, on a lot of different issues. And, um, and no, so I'm really excited to see uh, the, the movie when it's finally made. Yeah. And, and, um, and so there's the movie. You also obviously have been doing Holy Moly, which is hysterical. Oh, my God. And Holy Moly. You know what? Oh, my husband got uh, uh, a text from one of his friends and oh, how dare he be so rough on that diver? What, is he jealous? <laughs> You know, and I'm like going, oh, my God, that's the direction that they gave me, you know. So, well, a friend of mine actually said, like, <laughs> why did he have to, you know, go, uh, you know, go down hard on the uh, on the hot guy? Yeah, you know, on the, the diver. Hot... Yeah, yeah. And hot the thing diver. is, it was, yeah, it was so funny because, like, you know, af after we started, you know, because I'm, like, pulling Steve, you know, no, don't, you know, don't hit him. Don't, you know, don't trip him up, you know. And so, uh, you know, it was all, all fun and games and all that. And, and once we finished the shoot, I went to the diary and said, I'm really not that mean, you know. And he goes, oh, my God, he cracked me up. He said, all of the corrections that you were telling me were exactly what I, you know, were, you know they were actual corrections. They were actual things that I did wrong on the dive, you know. I mean, you just amplified it. You know, he said it was so cool to get criticism like that. Like, oh, my God. You know, but, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. We had, we had a good time. No, it was super cute and fun. And um, I was curious, curious, when did you guys actually shoot that? How long ago did you? Wow. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. right before the, the shutdown. Right. You know, fortunately, we got in and under the wire because, uh, uh, you know, because another friend of mine was due to come in and, uh, uh, and that, that was postponed. And so he hasn't been able to go back to it. You know, they haven't started up again. So... Yeah, I mean, it's, I was thinking that must have been at least a few months ago, you know, so yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously these things take time to get, you know, put out. And then I saw the super cute post you did about um, the Beverly Hills dog show, which was that, oh. in March? Was, that right, was that also right before um, the yeah, lockdown happened? Yeah, yeah, that, that was right around that time, went to the uh, Beverly Hills Kennel Club dog show. Uh, and, uh, you know, some friends of mine produced the, the show and they, they reached out and said, oh yeah, I'd love to see you. So I went out, you know, cause I do dog shows. I mean, right. I've, I've shown, uh, in confirmation, I've competed right. in dog agility. So that's one I, big thing you may not know about you is that you are a dog agility trainer. And I mean, that's become yeah. one of your biggest like passions. All right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's. That's one thing I'm 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 working on. It's it's kind of nice to have this downtime to really focus on on the dogs and um, you know unfortunately I don't have the equipment so uh, we had to wait until like some spaces opened up that you know we can go in and take lessons and and so I've been doing that with with my uh, my good buddy. Um, She's my 81 year old girlfriend. <laughs> wow, Shirley, Shirley Russell. She. She has this incredible dog, Zuki, and she is uh, amazing, incredibly talented. And I'm working on getting Pax in there, uh, my Perinian Shepherd. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're, we, we love working together, but she's, she keeps me connected to the dog agility world. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, how many dogs do you actually have? Right now I've got two. So I've got a Russell Terrier, and that's Roxy. Roxy, right? Roxy, yeah. Roxy, yeah. She was the one that was on uh, Beverly Hills Kennel Club Dog Show. That's one of the things, I mean, among the many things that my parents and I love about you is the fact that, because we're dog freaks, you know, dog yeah. obsessed as well. So my mom and dad are obsessed with, uh, and as, I mean, as am I, like, you know, Westminster, 
dog yeah. show. And, I've and, shown uh, at Westminster. Wow. I, I've shown at Westminster. I got a, uh, I think I got the third award of merit for uh, Pembroke Wells. Wow. Kirby. So, yeah, I'm not, usually when I go to Westminster, I'm, I'm going with a friend of mine who is a, a professional handler. And so I'm usually the bucket bitch. I, I'm like making sure that everything's clear, you know, off to the ring, make sure that she has the bait and you know, the combs and brushes and all that little towel. So that she's got, got like, to go big, in. like bags yeah. over your shoulders with every, yeah, like, yeah. every, yeah. And every clear the way, clear the way, dog coming through. <laughs> That's hysterical. I love that. Yeah. Um, and no, but one of the other things, you know, again, one of the many other things that I like about or love about you is, you know, you've you've talked a lot about, and this is something that I've sort of struggled with or that I've dealt with is, you know, you've been very open about mental health and a, a depression yeah. and the importance of being spiritually, you know, healthy. And, and um, I was curious, like, especially given like these turbulent times we're in like how do you and i know you're a big um, meditation uh person as well yeah um but like what how have you been dealing with um a lot of the you know the turbulent times that we've been in like how do you stay mentally and spiritually healthy well uh the one thing that's been like a real real consistent the, the, the one thing like when you don't have a schedule make a schedule you know that's really really important uh, and the one thing that I started, uh, you know, before the, uh, you know, this whole thing shut down, came down, uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, Ted McDonald, who has five point yoga, uh, mm -hmm. he live streams Monday through Saturday, um, 9am yoga. Mm -hmm. And that I have been kind of, pretty religious about, you know, to make mm -hmm. sure that I get my yoga practice in mm -hmm. and also, also be connected, uh, you know, e even though it's a live stream to be doing something, learning, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, uh, I'm also getting my uh, meditation in motion uh, um, uh, course that I, I'm producing uh, together. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting all of that stuff together and ready to go. And it's, it's looking pretty good. So, nice. uh, so I've got that, uh, also, uh, working on, uh, on a musical. Wow. Um, yeah. Based on my life story. Oh my you know, God. Based on, uh, breaking the surface, Patrick Allen Casey's writing the music oh, yeah, and the lyrics and Judy Norton is writing the, uh, the script. And so we're planning on a uh, Zoom read of the second act on uh, next Thursday, this coming Thursday. That's so unbelievable. So it's that we're, far we're into we're the moving. process. Yeah, we're moving. Right. So it's yeah. written. I mean, or it's or it's, it's, some of it's been written. Some yeah, the first act. The first act's been written. Uh, the music's done. Uh, the the music is and uh, and there may be some tweaks on the script uh, mm -hmm. before the reading. Uh, but we're planning a, a read on this Thursday. So we're going to be Congratulations. Masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, That's incredible. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of things going on. And you also mentioned mental health. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I, I really had to deal with uh, really this year. I mean, earlier this year, um, because I did some research and I had two major concussions during my diving career. Mm -hmm. And so I was like doing research because I was, you know, having this horrible depression just looming over me. And, lo and, I, and I, I know all the things that I'm supposed to be doing and all that. I just couldn't, I couldn't kick it. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this program and uh, Dr. Daniel Amen said, you know, that concussions can be accumulative. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh my God, I never had any uh, aftercare after I had my concussions. And so did a brain scan and, you know, found some um, damage to the frontal lobe and the hypothalamus, uh, which affects your motivation and often, wow. you know, your serotonin levels, GABA, all of that. And so I'm treating it on a, very holistically. So uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy and, and supplements. And so I really turned a corner and it's like, I, you know, cause I kept, Thinking to myself, you know, as soon as I turn this corner, because I know it's going to change, mm -hmm. that this will be an incredible gem that I, you know, that I will have. 
um, just to have that that knowledge and awareness, oh, yeah. uh, you know, to be able to help other people because I'm sure I'm not the only one who, you know, kind of might be going through the same thing. Well, my dad actually, who's on, just said in the comments, what supplements? Um, oh, I'm, um, I'm on uh, Sam E and um, God, I should go get him. Uh, Sam E, GABA, um, Taurine, uh, but uh, there, there's quite a few other ones. And, and, and that's been a, an adjustment too, because um, actually I take more supplements than I do HIV meds. Mm. You know, I take my HIV meds two pills twice a day. Mm -hmm. um, and my supplements, I mean, there's like a lot of pills. <laughs> I mean, I and I that's I, that's actually what I was going to talk to you about the HIV AIDS, you know, where we're at, sort of in terms not just the in terms of medicine, but just you know, politically with the movement. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's interesting that yeah, I mean, I don't and I'm not I don't profess to be an expert, but I know at one time the treatment for HIV was a lot more, you know, difficult and a lot more a lot it was a lot bigger in terms of the p actual pills and the amount of pills you had to take. Yeah. I mean, that we've, I mean, we've gone through such a revolution and a transformative period in terms of the treatment for HIV. Yeah, and, and, and I've been through it all. You know, I, I was on the AZT, you know, every two pills, every four hours, around the clock. And that was when I was training for, you know, for the Olympics. Wow. And then that evolved into something else and the protease inhibitors hit. And then, mm -hmm. you know, there, there were all of these adjustments. And some of the, some of the regimens, you know, is like, Okay, you have to take this with, with food. You have to take this on an empty stomach. Yeah, it was it was crazy, crazy, crazy. But now it's it's so much more um, simplified. But but I also uh, I I also do kind of an Eastern holistic mm -hmm. approach as well. I mean, I do the HIV meds, Western medicine, but I also do a lot of um, I do acupuncture, Chinese herbs. Um, I go to my Chinese herbalist and acupuncturist once a week, and he kind of keeps me, you know, in, you know, in, in shape as far as, uh, you know, what my body needs and to be healthy. Yeah. No, and my parents actually are, because they actually, if you know, my parents live in Bangkok, in Thailand. Oh, wow. And uh, I know, totally. Wow. Off. I mean, they actually only moved there like three or four years ago, but yeah. You know, they are really into holistic medicine and acupuncture and yeah. my dad, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, it's not to get too far off topic, but my dad has actually not even been to like a real uh, Western doctor in like 20 years or something because, yeah. you know, um, but I think, you know, like you said, having a, a, a balance between Western and Eastern and, you know, but being open-minded right. with some alternative um, options, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I find uh, a lot of the, um, uh, functional medicine. I mean, it makes so much sense, you know, mm -hmm. to start with where where the problem is, you know, and and working with that rather than treating the symptom. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Western medicine is good yep. at treating symptoms and killing things. Yep. You know, no. the, thing, the thing about killing things is like you're killing the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. So I, you know, I'm. Ultimately, everybody has to do what they're comfortable with. And, right. and this is what I'm, I'm comfortable with. And I'm leaning towards doing <clears throat> much more holistically and looking at the, you know, the whole body. And so yeah, I'm doing lots of research on that. You know, food is medicine. And yeah. you know, Ocean Robbins has you know, the whole food revolution summit and, mm -hmm. and, and all that. It's, it's great stuff. And also knowing where the, the food you know, is being um, you know, very much in tune with, uh, you know, with the environment, mm -hmm. you know, what, what's resourced humanely and what's resourced sustainably. So 100%. It, that's, that's a whole, whole thing. No, I mean, it's true. American, especially Western medicine is always, you said, geared around like treating, you know, conditions as opposed to preventative, you know, taking right. preventative you know, uh, actions to, you know, with your the food you take in, you know, your physical exercise. Um, it's just a completely different way of thinking versus Asia and other parts of the world. You know, yeah. unfortunately, if Amer I think if America, you know, 
got got its act together when it comes to agriculture and I mean anyway, that's a whole other you know yeah that's, wrong conversation. That, yeah that that's that's a whole that, that man that that's a rabbit hole that you can jump down and and you can just never have to come up for air i mean you're there's so much information out there but there's but you are literally really honestly people. as far as i'm concerned you are literally like a god because not only after going through what you've been through you look unbelievable i mean uh, i know you took those pictures that um i guess it was for people magazine last year of you on the diving board and, oh uh, no no the um espn, oh, ESPN. body issue body issue <laughs> yeah i you know what it was so funny because like i you know they uh you know you, you're oh natural you know totally naked and uh, and I said, well, it's going to be a closed set, right? And they said, no, no, we, we're going to do it outside. You know, we can't, you know, we can't do a closed set. And I said, well, um, you know, it, you know, I, I said, you know, are you sure? And they said, yeah. Well, Michael Phelps didn't have any problems with it. He's like, yeah, he's in a pool. Okay, I'm on a platform with all of these houses looking down onto the pool. It's like, hi, here I am. Like, oh my God, that's Greg Luganis naked. Yeah, really. And it was so funny because like, the, you know, these two, uh, two women were, had a stroll or, you know, out for a stroll with their baby and all that, you know, walking by. I was like, did a double take. It was like, oh my God, that guy's naked. But, you know, I, you know, when, when I first started, I was a little, you know, I was a little self-conscious and then, uh, but I mean, everybody on the shoot was so professional and I was like, oh, good deal, you know, what yeah. the heck? <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, I think, I mean, how great though, that you can also be sort of a, and like I said, that's why I said, you're kind of like a god because you represent how someone is able to overcome all these obstacles health-wise, I mean, in every mm -hmm. sense, and yet still look amazing and you know, be physically and spiritually grounded and, you know, and, and, um, and I think, you know, and, and I think it's actually amazing that yes, that the body issue would be sort of a representative of all different kinds of people, you know, and, and yeah, athletes and, at different stages of their lives. Yeah. And the thing that I, you know, I, the reason why it was so important for me to do it, I, I felt was, um, let's see, how many years ago was that? I'm 60 now. Um, so <clears throat> I think it was, I was what, 50, it may have been a couple of years ago, 50, 58 or something. And I was like, hey, I'm 58. I've been HIV positive since 88, 1988. And it's just like, you know, you know, it was important to me to get myself in shape and all that and, and look good. But, you know, to, to let people see what 58 can look like. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yep. you know, if you take care of yourself and, you know, and a lot of it is, you know, what you do, what you put into your body, but also what you do for your body. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and going back to like the conversation about HIV and AIDS, uh, I saw your post about Larry Kramer. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Who was a yeah. hero of mine, uh, like you and another hero yeah. of mine. And um, so, I mean, did you, you I saw you, you performed in a play that he'd written. In yeah, in Chicago. It was, yeah, it was funny because uh, um, he called me up. <clears throat> he called me up. We, I, I don't think we had. We may have met uh, uh, when I was working on the book, or uh, maybe when I was on book tour. I probably met him then. Then he reached out to me, <clears throat> and he said, um, "Greg, would, would you do my play? Um, Just say no in Chicago." And it's like when the playwright calls you, asking you to do his play, you do the play. And Larry Kramer. I mean, and I it's Larry Kramer. Here. And so, um, yeah, so I did that. And it was so wonderful. Um, I, I was on stage with Alexander Billings. And it was, and, and she's been very straightforward um, and, and about her HIV status as well. So it was funny because like we would we would be on lunch break and the three of us would be like comparing notes because this is when like the treatments were really insane. I, the protease inhibitors were just coming out and all that. And I was on a trial for the Norvir study and 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 then Larry said, "How are, how the hell are you be you know going on stage? How are you able to do this? You know because one of the side effects of the protease inhibitors Norvir 
is, and especially the dose that they gave it to you for, for the study, you know, is explosive diarrhea within 20 minutes after taking it. And then you have the next hour to recover because your energy was so depleted. Jesus. And so basically what I did, I said, Larry, I mean, it's like anything else. I take it two hours before I, I know that I have to be on stage. And he goes, oh my God, why, you know, it's, that's so logical. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, that's what you do. I mean, not to make light of it, but it's like, that's exactly. the last thing you want when you're going on stage is explosive. Oh, I know, I know. It, yeah, no, and, and, and I had to wear tights. Yeah, right. I mean. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> my God. Um, but no, so that was, that was the, one of the acting roles you did. And then didn't you do, was it Jeffrey or didn't you do, um, yeah, around the same time you did another play. Um, uh, Jeffrey, let's see. Jeffrey was uh, actually when uh, um, Robbie Brown introduced me to Eric right. Marcus right. Um, when I was doing Jeffrey mm -hmm. because I, I went to Robbie Brown and I said I really want to do a book, and he said, "Oh, I've got the writer for you," and he introduced me to Eric Marcus. Um, and so, uh, that must have been what, 83, 83, wow. 84. Wow. Uh, we worked on the book through 84, published in, no, 94, 94, 94, 93, 94. Mm -hmm. Then, um, 95, the book, book was published, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I played Darius mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. So it was funny because like when I auditioned for it, my manager at that time, is, you know, I, I auditioned and then I flew from New York to California. And by the time I got back to California, my manager had called me and he said, I've got some good news and bad news. And I said, okay, you know, let me have it. You know, bad news first. No, no, no. He said good news. Uh, I, I said good news first. Um, and he said, well, Chris Ashley wants you for Jeffrey. I said, and I said, great, what's the bad news? So the bad news is he wants you to play Darius. And I go, awesome, because everybody assumed that I would be going in the role as the boyfriend, Steven, or I would be, you know, I would be Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, 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 no. I, I wanted uh, the role of Darius. And so I, would, I would, couldn't have been happier. So, and it was so great. I mean, going in for Brian Batt, um, he, you know, he, they were coming, they were, it was so funny because Brian was coming out to California to do Jeffrey in California. I was going to New York from California to do to replace him. So I mean, it was it, it was a lot of fun. It was it was a great experience. It was it was it was a lot of fun. And so, is acting something that you had always wanted to do, or is that or is that something that like at what point did that become of interest to you? Well, I I started as a dancer. I mean, I was performing on stage, uh, doing dance and acrobatics. Uh, I performed in musicals. I, I mean, my first performance on stage was when I was three. I sang and I did a tap number. And then I got a partner and then, uh, you know, we would do recitals and fairs and, mm -hmm. you know, all of this stuff when we were growing up because we couldn't compete in talent contests until I turned six. Mm -hmm. So we had all that time to, you know, to perform. And then once we started competing, then we started winning everything. <laughs> so it was, you know, it was, it, was, it was pretty amazing. So I always wanted to get back to, the, and when I went back to uh, university, mm -hmm. uh, I got my degree in drama, minor in dance. So um, yeah, so my intent was to, you know, to get back to, you know, to acting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. dance, uh, you know, I kind of dived my dance career <laughs> through my dance career, you know, yeah. through, through, uh, through what would have been my dance career, I dived. So that, that was my dance. I well, and the two obviously are, you know, are uh, connected in a lot yeah. of ways. I mean, you know, it's control, you know, it's all about control of your body and, and, uh, no, I mean, it's, it's pretty, I mean, you, you've done so many things. It's almost like, it's, it's incredible. Um, and then I know like, and I sort of alluded this, to this earlier, but you know, I noticed that you're, you're not scared about uh, you know, expressing your political 
opinions on on Twitter and and on social media. And I mean, I, what do you where where are you at in terms of how do you see things going with uh, you know this election and Trump and uh, you know what is your perspective on the way that things are going at the moment? Well, you know, like I said, I mean, we, you know, it's. Uh, the most important thing is educate yourself and get out and vote. Mm -hmm. Right. Just, right. just, just get, 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 get out and vote. Um, yeah. Well, I know, and I know you vote. You, you posted that you're supporting Biden and you know, you're, you're on board. I mean, he's the nominee, so it's like you know, yeah. Who else? Who else are we going to be behind? I guess. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a. I was for Pete in the primary, but I always said like, whoever gets the nomination, we got to get behind right. that person, you know? Right. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, you know, out, out of the gates, I mean, I was really excited about um, Pete and I don't think we've heard the last of Pete. So mm -hmm. I think he'll be around, um, yes. but that was uh, so refreshing to have somebody who is intelligent, mm -hmm. uh, speaks all of these different languages, which yep. I mean, <laughs> Not many other presidents have that ability. Trump can barely you, speak English. Yeah, but then, but then when you go to other countries, yeah. you know, those other countries, they you know, they know several different languages. Their leaders know several different languages, and also in tune with different cultures. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so yeah, I, I thought that he was fresh, fresh air. But um, yeah, the most important thing is educate yourself and get out and vote. You know, and that was one of my posts you know, that I that I did today for my personal page. Was mm -hmm. uh, my lesson for today was uh, to listen, mm -hmm. learn, mm -hmm. and love. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so important, you know, in, in, especially in these times because right. I can't speak for. I mean, even though I'm a brown person, you know, I can't speak for. Uh, you know, for African American or Black person, um, that is not my experience. So, but what I can do is I can learn. You know, I can do uh, some research and understanding. And coming from uh, you know that that human spirit, you know, that we have within ourselves, you know, to know what the right thing is to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you say your feeling? Because I, I, I. I... It seems to me that despite, you know, all the adversity, you've always been naturally sort of an optimistic person. Um, do you feel optimistic about, I mean, about, I mean, about uh, politics in general, but also just like, I mean, given that we're now, what, 50 years after Stonewall, like, do you feel like in terms yeah. of the, the LGBT community, do you feel like we're on the right track? Or are you feeling a little, you know? I, you know? I, I, I think a lot of the, um... You know, uh, a lot of that positive energy, um, because the, ne the energy has been so negative, mm -hmm. you know, I think that a lot of that positive energy, a lot of those, uh, those individuals, um, some of them have been silent. Mm -hmm. you know, and and it's, it's, it's at that tipping point where you can't be silent anymore because silence is... Um, you know, it, you know, it's it's compliance. It's you know, it's it it, it you you have to you have to speak up, you know, mm -hmm. and speak out and um, you know, and 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 have people's backs, mm -hmm. you know, in, in in a humanitarian way, mm -hmm. you know, in a very humanistic way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I think that that I I, I think that's that's our nature. You know, but you know, but the, the key is is getting out, voting, articulating. Um, use your ears, listen, listen to others, mm -hmm. be o open to you know to ideas, and and to stay true to your values. Mm -hmm. No, and I think and I think you've done that. I mean, you've really you're like a great example of someone who's used their platform to speak out on. Like, I don't know, I, a quote that always stuck with me was Sidney Poitier once said, I use my work as an expression of my values. And I think yeah. you really are like that kind of person. You use your work and your, your platform uh, to, to express your values. And I noticed one other way that you use your, you've used your platform is to support 
um, raise a child, which is a foster care organization. Yeah. And that's actually something that I, I think, I, mean, I think yeah. I knew about it. I knew that about you because I, I, I watched the documentary and I read the book, but you know, that's yeah, something but, that maybe, but, but most people don't know that I spent my first nine months in foster care. Right. Uh, and, I mean, uh, I mean, I just uh, recently uh, met my biological mother, and wow. she was told that uh, that I was adopted by a mixed race couple because they knew that I was going to have darker skin. And so, you know, it. Wow. it it stopped there. Whereas my biological father, when he was watching the Olympic Games in 1976, Montreal, uh, the, he heard about this kid of Samoan descent and diving. And as soon as he saw me on TV, he said, there's my boy. So he, he recognized that I was his son. Wow. Uh, and, and the thing I, I knew, because this is something, because I, I went through a really bad rebellion with my parents. I was such a shit, you know, to my parents. But, uh, you know, it was uh, one of the things that came up through my rebellion was that I was curious about my biological parents. And the one thing that one of the nurses uh, who handled my adoption, she said that uh, my father wanted to raise me. But because my mother was underage, mm -hmm. he, there was no way that that was going to happen. So I always knew that my dad wanted me. Mm -hmm. So I mean, what a, I mean, I'm just like sort of in awe. I mean, listen, and realize you just recently met your biological mother for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's pretty intense. Yeah. I mean, pretty incredible stuff. You know, yeah. But that's but yeah, I mean, that is something probably most people don't know about you. And I think it's great that you that you that you, because of that personal experience that you've that you're supporting or you've been involved with this organization and um, yeah. I thought the streetlight banner campaign that they did was really cool and and that you were a part yeah. of that. Um, yeah, it's funny. My my husband and I we um, somebody said, "Oh, go you know in Van Nuys on I can't remember what street it was on." But so we drove by and it's like, "Okay, let's get a picture." <laughs> I hope to meet Johnny too um, one day. I hope that happens. Yeah. Well, this is over. Um, I'd love to get together with you guys and yeah, grab definitely, coffee. definitely. We we got to get together. Um, and Leslie no, too. Say it again. And Leslie. Oh, I mean, absolutely. he was hysterical. You had him on. I was like dying. He, I mean, he is such a kick. He I mean, so funny. He what? A, what? A, and he knows like, everybody, uh, right? Say it again. And he knows everybody, right? It's um, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's it, you know, and it's so funny, like. What I mean, look, I've known who he is for a long time, and you know, and, yeah. and, and you know, a lot of us knew who he was, but it's so cool to see him have this kind of you know next chapter, like which you yeah. know, no one could have well, foreseen. You know, my connection, I, I did Dan Butler's one man show, and the last character in the one man show, there's 14 different characters. The last character is Leslie, is based on Leslie. You know, because the characters are based on real people in Dan Butler's life. So That's it was, hysterical. Yeah, so it's like, I- so Have you ever I, met him? Have you, have you ever met him in person, Leslie? Leslie, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, we, so you know we used to run, Oh yeah, we used to run into each other all the time. We were actually just at um, Kitchen 24 on Santa Monica, and that's where we'd always see him. We'd always run uh, into him there. Totally off topic, but I, that just made me realize, I wonder, if, I wonder now that things are opening back up if uh, Kitchen 24 is opening again because oh. that's one of our that's one of my places i like to yeah go. we uh, that it was closed off but i think it was closed off for the demonstrations or right. the you know peaceful march or whatever right. so it was we we couldn't get there but we well, were you, on our me, way to there yeah you me johnny and leslie we we should do a uh, kitchen 24 meetup hang next, out next few weeks we'll, so do, we'll do a hangout hangout uh, totally yeah but no i'm i'm so grateful to you for doing this i've so you are, I think, one of the classiest, most kind, um, oh. and just, uh, you know, inspirational people uh, I know, and, and I look up to you so much. So well, thank, thank you for you. doing this. It's Not an honor. Either. And yeah, and, uh, so yeah, I'll be in touch, and uh, hopefully we'll get together soon. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for taking the time. Have a good My night. <laughs>
too late. Sorry about the mix up at the beginning. Oh, no worries. I, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm not real tech savvy. My, actually, Johnny helped me. <laughs> Johnny helped me and said, what's going on? What's going on? What are you doing? I, I said, I'm trying to find him. Johnny, I'm, I can't find him. <laughs> I, I was scrambling. I was like, I was like, what, I was like what, am I doing something wrong? Like, what's, what's going on here? But no, it's, it worked out. So thank right. you. Have thank a good night. You. See you later. Okay. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.